pro-government forces in Libya claim to have taken control of ISIL's headquarters in Sart. The militias backed by Libya's UN-backed unity, unity government have managed to kick the ISIL fighters out of the Ouagadougou center, which ISIL has used as head headquarters since February last year. Fighting is, however, still ongoing as the forces battle to liberate the entire city of Sart. Meanwhile, the head of Libya's government of national accord, Fayez al-Saraj, has said the country does not need foreign troops to help it fight ISIL. Pro-government troops have been advancing on militants in the coastal city of Sirte since May. A week ago, at Libya's request, the United States intervened, launching airstrikes on ISIL strongholds in Sirte. Saraj insists that as long as the soldiers have air cover, there's no need for foreign troops on Libyan soil. Let's discuss this further with CCTV's Daniel Wrenches in Washington and Yasser Hakim in Cairo. Um, Yasser, Egypt, along with other countries in the region, have been following the developments in Libya very closely. Do they share these sentiments expressed by Saraj? Uh, definitely. And there's uh, ongoing negotiations and talks between the Egyptian officials and the Libyan leaders. Uh, Faisal Saraj was in Cairo just a day before the U.S. Uh, airstrikes began in Libya. So uh, we believe that the, this has been a, the subject of talks between him and the Egyptian officials before the U.S. Stri strikes uh, take uh, part. Also, his deputy is currently in Cairo as well. So, uh, and the head of the army, the chief of the army was in Cairo a few days ago. So there is a lot of coordination between the Egyptian officials uh, and uh, the Libyan officials on the ongoings there. Egypt ha was one the first country to uh, have an airstrikes against uh, Sirte, uh, against uh, ISIL in Sirte uh, last year in retaliation for the killing of Egyptians there and has always been calling for uh, airstrikes against uh, ISIL to avoid the spill out of this group uh, into neighboring countries or into Europe. And um, at, at this point, it also is very keen on making sure that not uh, no foreign troops are going into the country, that uh, the Libyan forces will be there with uh, the uh, help of the uh, foreign uh, intelligence, maybe uh, technical uh, and military uh, training and capabilities. Egypt has been giving arms to, uh, and also technical training, military training to the Libyan army in the last uh, year or so. Uh, so there is close uh, dealings with the, with the Libyan officials, and I believe they understand uh, what Saraj has been saying, and they back this uh, point of view. Daniel, the head of Libya's government of national accord says as long as the soldiers have air cover, they don't need more foreign troops. So how long is this American air campaign expected to last? Well, uh, the justification for the airstrikes in U.S. legal terms is the authorization of the use of military force which is a kind of legalese to get over the fact that uh, the U.S. can have sustained air campaigns targeting key figures in other countries without the need for the president to declare that they're in a major conflict. Uh, that means that they don't have to then go to the U.S. Congress to uh, get that authorization. And it means essentially that it can be an open-ended commitment uh, going forward. As long as the U.S. military and the White House believe there is some justification that there is some kind of threat to the United States. That being said, uh, the Libya situation has its own internal dynamics. I think one of the big dependent factors from the United States point of view is how well this unity government is able to coalesce and how effective the Libyan military is going forward as to how much support they'll need going forward. Right. Uh, yes, sir. In spite of the position taken by the unity government leader, there are already indications of a significant foreign military presence in Libya. So can we attribute the success we've witnessed there to the presence of these foreign troops in Libya? Now, it's always been a kind of a secret uh, issue uh, about the foreign troops not declared publicly in many cases. We've known that there were British and French troops, and that was uh, clear when uh, ISIL troops uh, the, uh, were, were going into the uh, oil refineries in the south and southeast of Sirt. And that's when uh, we've seen the presence of uh, special forces from the UK uh, to help the Libyan army or to stop the uh, ISIL uh, uh, militants from taking over oil refineries, main oil refineries in Libya. But uh, at this point, this is a worry to many countries, the fear of having foreign troops 
uh, on the ground uh, can uh, be uh, a catalyst for division because every foreign troops can come with their own agendas and this can cause a division within the uh, Libyans themselves and also you the, the um, GNA would lose its uh, public uh, backing there because uh, foreign troops the presence of foreign troops will cause uh, anger within the public uh, and and the fear that this could be a new uh, force taking over the country after getting ISIL out so um, it's a very sensitive issue uh, and I think that's what Saraj is trying to avoid to keep foreign troops out even uh, as public opinion to avoid what's hap happening in Iraq and in Syria and much of it is blamed by the by the uh, nationals here as uh, a, a result of direct foreign uh, troops coming into the into this region and I think Libya doesn't want a repeat of that so, Daniel, most observers say ISIL is just one of the many problems facing Libya. There's still a dozen more factions fighting for control of the, uh, of the country. So what's America's strategy after the defeat of ISIL, or is that their only concern? Well, I think it depends on what those factions are. The, as we all know, there have been troops on the ground and in, indeed intelligence assets from the United States working covertly to try to work out this complex mix of different factions and who they can trust, uh, not only militarily, but politically moving forward. So I think it would depend if ISIL was evacuated from Libya, and that's a big if, it would depend on the uh, perception of the intelligence groups as to whether they represented an international threat uh, to Western powers and to the United States in particular or whether it was part of a, a sort of domestic uh, civil conflict as to whether they felt that they still had the legal justification to have military conflict going forward. But certainly if the Libyan government comes forward as it has done in CERT and requests help from the United States in certain targeted airstrikes, I think that makes the job uh, of justifying it that much easier. But as I say, the difficulty so far has been the fact that it's such a complex environment that the US has deployed significant intelligence assets on the ground to try to work all of this out. All right, Donald Branch is live for us in Washington, D.C. And Yasser Hakim live in Cairo. Thank you both of you for joining us.